Cool. Hi everyone, uh, I'm John from SEO Gadget and we're going to go through a few things surrounding the new cookie legislation here in the UK and Europe. So I'm going to try and give you an unbiased and informative view of this. Uh, there's a lot of opinions flying around about whether this is a good thing or a bad thing for websites, um, whether it's fair. But I'm going to try and give you information rather than opinions. So this is what we've found when we've been looking into the legislation for uh, our clients here in the UK. So the first thing really I need to say is you know, we're not lawyers and as an agency we don't have um, any legal qualifications, right? So we're advising people based on our understanding of the technology. Um, if, if our clients really want to kind of get into the legal side of things then the advice is go and see, see their solicitors and their, their legal team. Uh, but we can give some effective and, and good advice based on our understanding of cookies and, and their websites. So here's some information from the ICO about what this legislation is about. And really it's kind of the aim of it is to protect the privacy of internet users. And it's all just surrounding the fact that kind of most users won't understand that the fact that the uh, cookies are storing information based on their uh, user journey through your site. So really, you know, the legislation is not banning the use of cookies. It's just stating the fact that you need to make your users aware of the fact that you're using them, what you're using them for, and also ask for user consent before you set any of those cookies. So I think that's important to get out of the way. A lot of people are thinking that this bans the use of cookies. It doesn't. Pick up, sorry. So the 26th of May, okay, this is the date when this legislation is going to be enforced in the UK. Um, it was actually passed, the law was passed last year on the 26th of May 2011, but due to the complications and the time it takes for sites to implement these changes, um, they've given everyone a grace period of 12 months. So the 26th of May is when this is going to be enforced here in the UK. Uh, we're not sure about the rest of Europe yet. Um, but really, it should be quite an interesting few months as sites start to prepare for this. Uh, there's already a lot more news coming through, so it'll be interesting, to say the least. So, in South Africa, why, why do you need to think about this if it's a European legislation? Well, strictly speaking, it applies to traffic from the UK and traffic from Europe, um, not sites based in the UK and Europe. So even a big site in the US that's getting traffic from the UK really, strictly speaking, should be thinking about this. If they're going to police that, if they're going to actually punish sites uh, outside of Europe, I don't know. Personally, I wouldn't be losing any sleep over that, but it's worth thinking about, definitely. So key points in the legislation, you know, how do you start to understand this? Really, we kind of break, break it down into three, three areas. Um, so the first one is information. Really, you have to give your users information as to what cookies you're using, what cookies you're setting, sorry, and uh, what they do, and how long they're going to be set for, and why you're using them. Uh, that's pretty much the main purpose of this, is to make sure users are aware of the fact that this is going on. Um, and then the second thing is user consent. So. Uh, the legislation states that users should have the, the choice as to whether they let you set these cookies and whether they let, you, they let you store their information as they browse through your site. And then the third area is the exclusion. So which cookies are actually excluded from this? Uh, the legislation says that uh, cookies that are strictly necessary um, can be excluded, but it's strictly necessary from the user's perspective, not the service provider's perspective. Um, it's a bit strange because this area of the legislation has been left kind of open to interpretation. Um, so there's quite a big grey area at the moment is, you know, what cookies are allowed, which ones aren't. Are analytics cookies allowed, are they not? So this get, that's quite confusing. So I have issues here with the mouse. Come on, boy. There we go. Right, so what are we doing for our clients here in the UK? Um, really, the, what we're doing is we're providing uh, cookie audits, so we're looking into the use of cookies on their sites, 
um, and trying to educate our clients. Um, some of them are getting worried about this, some of them aren't, um, but the ones who do want to know about it, we can inform them of, you know, give them an overview of the legislation, show them what cookies they're using and show them what they might need to be thinking about. So yeah, the first step is a cookie audit, okay, and we've done that already for a few clients here in the UK, <clears throat> and um, it's been quite an interesting piece of work. So the first thing when you're conducting a cookie audit is just to try and find out what cookies your site is using, okay, so the, the end result of that should be a nice list, all the cookies you're using, some sites use quite a, quite a lot, some will hardly use any, maybe even just analytics cookies, uh, but whatever kind of uh, way you fit into that, you need to find out exactly what's, what cookies you're using. Okay, we're going to go through a few things we can use to do that in a bit, um, but really at this stage what you want to be noting down is the name of the cookie, the expiry time of that cookie, so whether it's a session cookie or a persistent cookie, lasting longer than that visit, um, the location that that cookie set, whether it's the home page or a specific page on the site, and whether it's a first party or third party cookie. So here we've got a screenshot, a small screenshot from the web developer toolbar and their cookie information function. Okay, and you can clearly see here we've got a, an expiry date on the cookie which is five years from the date it was set. So that's quite valuable information to be passing on to the user. Um, you know, so you, you, you need to be telling them whether the cookie just lasts for the session, whether it lasts for 12 hours, 24 hours, a year, 5 years. You'll find that when you start looking at these cookies that you get quite a big variation of, of length that these cookies are set for. So once you've done that, if possible, it's quite important to identify what function and what purpose each cookie is set for. Okay. So um, some will be to log sessions, some will be to log user activity. You need to find out why, because then once you've done that, you can start to decide whether that cookie is essential for the user or essential for the site, or where does it fit into the whole thing. Okay, so here we kind of we found this cookie which is uh, BB Last Activity. And that was belonging to a V Bulletin forum. Okay, and that cookie, just by searching on Google, right? We just put the name into Google had a little look, did a bit of research, found out what that cookie is used for. And it's used to track the last activity on the, on the forum, so the forum can then serve up relevant new posts, etc, etc. So here we've got a bit of contradicting information uh, based on analytics cookies. Okay, so from the ICO it's stating very, very clearly indeed that the way they, they, um, they define strictly necessary is, is it strictly necessary for the user, not for the service provider? Okay. And then you've got the UK government's digital service um, office, kind of, and they came out a few days ago and said, yeah, well, analytics cookies, they are essential because that's how we, that's how we make continuous approve, improvements to our site. So without them, how can we improve the service we're offering? So they kind of contradict each other there, right? Um, and this is one of the interesting things, as, as we're getting closer to the date, the 26th of May, this information is all, new information is coming out and it's starting to get a little bit clearer as to what might be accepted and might, what might not be accepted, but it's still kind of contradicting and a bit unclear. So when you're doing your audit, Okay, if you find cookies that just aren't being used anymore, or aren't useful for the site, or aren't needed, just ditch them, get rid of them, uh, try and keep a record of that as well, because it would be useful to say, okay, well we've done a cookie audit, we found these cookies, and we've got rid of these ones because they weren't being used. Again, that shows good intent, should anything happen, right? And a good, good excuse for a little tidy up as well. Never bad. Right, so how did we actually go about finding these cookies? When I was doing a cookie audit recently, I used a combination of a couple of things. Uh, the first thing was just very, very simply uh, clearing my browser history, working my way through the site, 
and seeing what uh, cookies the browser picked up. Um, in Firefox, when you go into the cookie window, you get a list of the cookies that's collected and you also get information on the name, uh, the expiry date and so on. So, quite useful and easy to do as well. Um, then you've got the web developer toolbar in Firefox, has got a cookie information function so you can see all the cookies that that's collected as well. It's pretty much the same as the one before but you get a slightly different layout. I was using the two in combination just to make sure that one hadn't picked up some that some and the other one hadn't um, to double check and cross reference. Okay, but what I found was doing it manually like this was quite useful because it actually got me going through the site too. So I got to know the site um, from the from that cookies perspective. If that kind of makes sense, you can of course do an automated crawl. Uh, there aren't many tools available at the moment. Um, I would imagine there will be some coming out soon. Um, this is uh, one by the Cookie Collective and you can get there if you go to cookielaw.org forward slash cookie search you just pop your domain into the box hit enter you get a big list of cookies that, that the uh, software's found on that site. I found it to be not that reliable it had a lot of repetition, a lot of duplicate cookies in there I didn't trust it 100%. Um, might be useful for a first glance, but I wouldn't rely on it 100%. So here's an example of uh, what some sites here are doing um, in terms of giving information to their users. So this is the BBC's site. Um, as part of their privacy policy, they've now up uploaded a page um, which is their cookie policy, right? So they've got a big table of the cookies they're using on their site. Uh, what the purpose of those cookies are. And it just informs the users, okay, right, we're using these cookies and this is why we're using them. If you can do at least this, then it will show good intent. It will, show, it will tick one box for you, right? Um, part of the audit we're doing for our clients here is we're providing them um, a table like this <clears throat> that they can upload onto their site. So you get something they can put up might be something you can do for your clients as well, perhaps if they're interested. Um, and it won't really affect, you, you know, you're not doing anything too risky here, it's just a new page as part of the privacy policy. So, the user consent. This is a slightly different matter. Um, there's, there's a few risks involved with getting this wrong. Um, you know, the last thing you want to do is scare users off. So, if, if you put up a brash message that says, hey, we're using cookies, we're going to track all your private details. You know, some people are going to be a bit freaked out and they might go to the competition instead. So you've got to be quite careful with this. Um, when, you're do when you're kind of working towards this, if you want to do it, I'd highly, highly recommend A-B testing, a few different options. See how users react to different messaging, see what the effect on your analytics is, see how it affects your traffic, etc., etc. Et you don't want to rush into this, right? Um, but here's an example from the ICO site. So they've just put a bar at the top of the browser, which kind of gives you this message of, you know, we're using cookies. Find more information here. Please accept to use cookies. So it's an opt-in. It's got to be opt-in, not opt-out. Um, the ironic thing is here that it uses a cookie to decide whether you've been or not. So kind of a bit ironic, but there we go. So this is gov.uk. Uh, this is just a test, um, and this is an opt. Uh, this is an opt in. So you've got this pop up here, right? Um, that just comes up with a message, just say, stating the fact that they're using cookies, um, and you just click thanks. I've read the warning, and then you can go and use the site. Okay, but um, there's no way to say no. I don't want to use cookies, and I still want to use the site. So it's kind of a bit restrictive. It's not essentially really asking for user consent, it's a message that you have to read and then once you've read that, they're using that for consent. It's just a test, so I don't think they're going to be doing this in terms of complying with the legislation, but it's an interesting example. So if you're still confused, there's a big grey area with this legislation. Um, 
a lot of it's open to interpretation, so no one really 100% knows yet, in the UK anyway, what's likely to get you in trouble, what's likely to be enough, how far do you need to take this, and how a user's going to react. So, you know, some of the biggest concerns are analytics cookies. You know, are they essential or are they not essential? Um, do you need to ask for consent to set analytics cookies? Affiliate cookies, again, this is quite a good example of the fact that an affiliate cookie is 100% essential for the service provider. It's the core of their business. But for the user's perspective, if that cookie wasn't there, it wouldn't affect their view of the advertising, right? But it would ruin the service provider's business. So, you know, where, where does the line sit? So, again, the biggest concern is user consent. A lot of people are wondering, you know, do I need to ask? What do I need to ask? You know, what are the risks here? Um, pretty big risks involved, you know, losing all your analytics data if everyone opts out of cookies. It could severely affect their user experience of your site. If they don't know any better, they might just think, well, it's a rubbish site, you know, and, and not put two and two together. Uh, loss of traffic, you know, some people might be scared off by the message. So, with the user consent, you have to work hard to get that right. If you don't, there's a big risk involved. Cool, so I hope that was useful. Um, feel free to pop any questions over at john at seogadget.co.uk or johnquinton1. Uh, we're going to put this presentation up on our Google Plus page as well if you want to see that. So thank you.